Hello guys, nice to see you. How are you doing? Hello, everything's fine, thanks. Cool. So, hi. So just to remind you again, but uh, soon we will um, inform you about the upcoming uh, midterm. So be aware that on this Saturday, we will have a midterm, like first midterm, uh, and prepare for that. So you have uh, your internet working and other conditions which are favorable for you to uh, do your best during the midterm. Okay, so last time we discussed the um, effect at the end of previous uh, lecture, we discussed the effect of um, dielectric material with certain dielectric constant K uh, which fills the space between two uh, plates of the parallel plate capacitor. So we have shown that um, the voltage, uh, like the potential difference between plates uh, drops when we add, like fills this space instead of having vacuum, it fills this space with uh, some dielectric material uh, with the electric constant K. Uh, so by factor of K and also uh, as a result, uh, we have drop in the electric field uh, between these two plates. So it becomes weaker by the factor of K when we fill this space with uh, the electric material. Uh, yeah, hello guys who just uh, joined us. Uh, we are shortly recalling at what, which topic we finished our previous um, lecture. So that's in particular the electric effect on capacitance of uh, a parallel plate capacitor. And today we will focus uh, pretty much all lecture on understanding of the uh, micro mechanism of this uh, effect of the electric on the electric field uh, and potential difference between plates of a capacitor. So this will be our point of interest for today. And uh, now I will change the camera. And we will start our discussion from uh, an electric dipole. So let's say if we have a system of two charges. One charge is negative, another is positive. They are equal by magnitude, but just different by um, sign. Uh, we can, so these two charges are fixed uh, with respect to each other um, at a distance along the, this line, which connects them. Um, with a distance which we will mark as 2a. Uh, so there is certain property, so such a system of two charges called electric dipole, and there is certain important property, uh, like quantity characteristic of electric dipole, as uh, electric dipole moment. So uh, electric dipole moment is a vector uh, e, which goes from the negative charge to a positive charge, which forms a dipole, and uh, its amplitude, its magnitude is equal to the product of the electric charge and the distance between these two charges. So it will be 2a times u. So this is the um, electric dipole moment. And uh, now this is the key 
uh, element which we will consider in terms of understanding the effect of the electric uh, material on uh, external electric field. Um, but we will go step by step from this uh, simple uh, dipole structure. Uh, so now let's consider that we locate this dipole in uniform external electric field. We have lines of electric field. And here we have this dipole, negative charge, positive charge. Here is some point O, it's like in the middle uh, between uh, two charges. So this dipole possess some uh, dipole electric uh, dipole moment. And obviously when we put uh, electric charges in external electric field, there is some force like electric force acting on these charges. So uh, in this case, we will have force F acting on positive charge, the same by magne magnitude, but different uh, in orientation, uh, force acting on the negative charge. So uh, total, uh, like resultant force which is acting on the dipole as a system will be equal to zero because these uh, two vectors will uh, cancel, uh, electric force vectors will cancel each other. Uh, however, this cannot be said uh, about the uh, torque uh, which these uh, forces create uh, about uh, axis which goes through point O, which goes through the middle of the uh, distance between two charges. And uh, now we show here some angle, call it theta. Now we can calculate uh, what will be uh, the total net torque. Uh, applied to this uh, dipole uh, about axis O, like axis which goes through point O perpendicularly to the uh, plane of our image. So one torque will be uh, created by uh, force F, uh, let's say, which acts on the uh, positive electric charge, it will be uh, force F times A, because we have from point O to this electric charge, the distance is A, the total distance is 2A, as we highlighted here, uh, then times sinus theta. <clears throat> this will be our um, or created by force F exerted on positive charge. Um, another component of torque we need to take into account is uh, torque originated from the force exerted to negative uh, charge, and it will be by magnitude uh, the same, because forces are the same, and due to symmetry of this case, uh, both torques will be equal in magnitude, and as a result, we will uh, have the total like, net torque applied to the system as two, because we have two components, uh, times F times A times, oops, sorry, not cosine, sinus theta. So now we can express the our electric uh, force. We know that electric force is equal to electric charge times electric field in the 
point where this charge is located. We have uniform electric field. That's why it will not uh, change uh, with uh, position. Uh, it will be the same for both charges, for like both locations of uh, negative and positive charges. So um, that's why we can write that the net torque is equal to two times Q E times A times sinus theta. And here, like this and this, like 2Q times A is nothing else as the uh, electric dipole moment. So that's why we can write here that we have uh, P, electric dipole moment, times E times sinus theta. And assuming that uh, torque is a vector uh, quantity, we uh, can write that in general case, uh, torque, like some net torque, which is um, exerted on the uh, dipole system in uniform electric field, will be equal to the vector product of the uh, electric uh, dipole uh, moment and electric field. So this is a parameter which describes um, how external electric field uh, effects on the um, electric uh, dipole uh, in um, the case of uniform electric field. So what is important to underline here to a, is there some questions where I didn't see them? A represents the distance between two charges. No, no, yeah, so you're right. There is uh, a distance between two charges is 2A, and uh, it just made for convenience to further consider this uh, quantity analysis of torque um, because we uh, calculate net torque about axis uh, which goes through point O, and point O is located in the middle between like in between two of these, of these charges. That's why distance from one charge to the axis will be A. So the key moment which should be um, underlined here uh, is that uh, this torque always tends to align electric dipole. Uh, it is seen from uh, this uh, um, uh, figure, like image, uh, that uh, this uh, net torque tries to align a uh, dipole along the electric field. So there is certain uh, net torque which uh, uh, forces electric dipole to uh, be aligned along these uh, electric field lines. Uh, and then there will be net torque equal to um, zero because here we have this sinus theta. If we imagine that this dipole is aligned parallel to the electric field lines, this uh, theta will be equal to angle will be equal to zero, sinus theta is zero, and then net torque is equal to zero. So it will be EPS. So that's the main uh, uh, conclusion which we take out from here. And uh, we proceed further just to uh, explain uh, another feature like accumulation of potential energy, uh, like some while uh, arra arranging this uh, electric dipole in external electric field. So let's us consider a system, electric dipole, electric field. And uh, let's say that some external agent um, provides certain 
uh, torque to change angle theta by a very small amount, like d theta, then uh, work like done by this external uh, agent will be uh, this torque times d theta. In this case, uh, the work which is done by external agent to tilt the uh, electric uh, dipole against from the alignment along the electric field, uh, so it will be against this torque which uh, is exerted on the electric dipole because of electric field, uh, will accumulate will result in accumulation of certain potential energy in the system, electric dipole, electric field. Because as you know, um, since we have dipole in electric field, uh, we always it always electric field always tends to um, push it uh, as much in alignment with electric field lines as possible. And if external agent instead uh, pushes it backwards, um, then definitely we accumulate certain potential energy in the system. So let us uh, consider this uh, potential energy and let's consider some final potential energy minus some initial potential energy. And it will be uh, when we integrate uh, this product tau d theta in the uh, range from uh, theta initial to theta final. So this will be equal integral theta initial theta final uh, electric field, uh, sorry, electric dipole moment times E times sinus theta, D theta. So this is with the expression for the net torque. Uh, now we can factor out this uh, constant electric uh, dipole moment and electric field. E integral from theta i to theta f sinus theta d theta and we will get p e minus cosinus theta from theta i to theta final. So this is equal when we take into account this minus, it will be P times E cosine of theta initial minus cosine theta final. So it is obviously that we are not enemies to ourselves and want to make it um, easier for us. So initial uh, theta we can consider as like any, which is convenient for us. And obviously uh, would be uh, convenient to consider case uh, when uh, theta initial is equal to uh, pi over two. And in that case, our cosine initial will be equal to zero. So eventually, uh, we will get minus P times E times cosinus theta. And uh, by choosing that, uh, initial potential energy uh, because absolute value of potential energy is very arbitrary parameter. 
So we can choose it as, as uh, zero uh, or any other value. Then we can write the potential energy of such system uh, will be equal just potential energy in the final point. And that will be just minus E times E cosine theta. And uh, uh, it can be represented in general case. Uh, potential energy is a scalar quantity. So uh, we can represent it as minus uh, dot product of uh, electric dipole moment and um, electric field. So uh, this is uh, energy parameter of the uh, uh, system, electric dipole, uniform electric field. Uh, so once we have had this introduction, quantitative introduction of uh, electric dipole interaction with electric field, we can proceed to another step and uh, uh, consider the um, uh, nature, like polar or non-polar nature of uh, certain molecules. So uh, molecules are considered to be polarized, like initially or permanently polarized, uh, when there is a separation uh, and they are called polar molecules, those which are permanently polarized. So the condition for such uh, definition is that um, there is separation between the average position of the negative charges and positive charges of the molecule. So uh, in this case, it's good to uh, show you an example of a quite common molecule. It's water molecule. We have negatively charged oxygen atom and two positively charged hydrogen atoms. So there is certain angle here, like 105 degrees about this. Uh, and we see that there is some spatial uh, um, asymmetry of this electric charges location. Uh, we have a negative charge centered here and positive charge is centered somewhere here. Uh, so there is certain distance between negative and uh, positive uh, average uh, charge location. And that means that such a chemical uh, structure of this molecule um, uh, provides permanent uh, polarization of this molecule. So it would be considered in certain uh, cases as electric dipole. And it possess certain electric dipole moment always because of its chemical structure. That's how this molecule is built. There are uh, molecules which, uh, because of its chemical uh, structure, are not polar. So they don't possess any uh, initial um, electric uh, dipole moment. And uh, this could be considered as um, negative charge and symmetric location of positive charges next to it. So we see that in this case, um, the net uh, like average location of positive and negative charges because of the symmetry um, is located in the uh, same point and there is no electric dipole. However, if we put such a system in external electric field, even non-polar molecules can be polarized. Um, for instance, if we put this not polar molecule in strong electric field, because of uh, 
electric forces which act on these uh, atoms, um, which are uh, carriers of positive or negative electric charge. Uh, we will see some uh, redistribution of electric charge within this molecule. And that will result in certain induced, so-called induced um, uh, polarity of this molecule because of external electric field. So it means that if even we don't have any uh, dipole, uh, electric dipole moment, which is because of symmetric chemical structure of the molecule, even so, in external electric field, because of um, redistribution of electric uh, charge uh, within the molecule, um, we can uh, cause some polarization of this molecule. And uh, some molecules like water, they are always uh, polar, uh, so they're called polar molecules because it possesses some uh, asymmetric chemical structure, which uh, results in this uh, permanent polar feature. So these moments are uh, important because it really defines how uh, materials made of these molecules uh, interact with electric field uh, and uh, how it affects on the strength of electric field inside these materials. So before we proceed further, I would like just to discuss a little bit about this uh, polar feature of uh, water. We actually uh, need to take this into account when, for instance, we wash our hands and try to get rid of some dirt from uh, hands or clothes. Uh, there are different materials, as you, you already understand. There are uh, materials made of polar molecules or non-polar molecules. And it is very easy for uh, polar molecules, like water molecules, to um, interact uh, uh, electrostatically with uh, another polar molecules. That's why um, it's easy to uh, dissolve uh, any dirt which is made of polar molecules uh, by water without help of any additives. However, if, for instance, there is some grease or like oil contamination, uh, these uh, organic uh, molecules are not uh, polar molecules, so they are non-polar molecules by definition, and uh, they don't interact with polar water molecules. There is no uh, uh, favorable conditions for uh, electrostatic interaction between uh, water molecules and non-polar molecules of grease. So in order to overcome this challenge, uh, it's obviously we add some soap. And soap possess uh, so-called surfactant uh, molecules, which have a mm, nice feature. Um, and they are long chemical structures with one end polar and one end non-polar. So that helps to interact with the non-polar end to non-polar molecules of grease, and the polar end interacts well with the water molecules. That's the way how we kind of bind these non-polar contamination molecules, like grease, to uh, so uh, surfactant molecules, and then attach them to water and help to dissolve and clean the surface. So this is uh, just one uh, feature of um, interacting between different molecules, uh, taking into account uh, the like polar features of the uh, molecules which are involved in this interaction. So let us proceed further because our goal is to understand the um, uh, microscopic nature 
of uh, reducing electric field when we place uh, the electric in between the plates of our capacitor. So uh, let us remind that what we already know, that uh, change, um, like difference of potential uh, between uh, two plates of a capacitor uh, is reduced uh, when we place some dielectric between the plates. So this delta V naught, it's a difference in uh, potential uh, when we have vacuum between plates, if we fill it with dielectric with dielectric constant K. So by factor of K, uh, potential difference reduces that is because the electric field between plates uh, also is reduced. So we have this E naught in, in vacuum. When we place the electric, it reduced by the uh, factor of K. So what uh, happens and what is the uh, microscopical uh, picture of this uh, process? Let me change the let me like share the screen. Share. Okay. So now we see, let us consider that we have some uh, dielectric made of polar molecules. You see that uh, we have these polar uh, molecules, like some tiny uh, electric dipoles, which form this dielectric material. Uh, and uh, they are randomly distributed. So they are not aligned and uh, uh, net some electric field, which is created by this uh, electric dipole because of their random distribution is uh, uh, equal to zero. So when we place this the electric material in between two plates of the capacitor uh, and where we have strong in external electric field, external with respect to the dielectrics so, uh, in between uh, two plates of the capacitor. Uh, what happens? We uh, exert certain torque, which we were talking about earlier, on these tiny uh, molecular um, dipoles and uh, start to align them uh, along the lines of electric field. So more or less, not all of them, it really depends on the uh, chemical st like structure, composition of this dielectric, also on temperature. Um, the higher temperature, the more um, molecules are uh, vibrating and it's more difficult to align them. That's why this alignment will be uh, the feature of, mole of molecular dipoles to be aligned in external effect, uh, electric, uh, external field will de depend on uh, different factors. Uh, in particular, uh, composition uh, of this dielectric um, and temperature. But more or less in different uh, extent, all these um, molecular dipoles are uh, somehow aligned along this field. So what will... Uh, be the result of this. Uh, since there is some net alignment along this uh, direction from one plate to another, um, there will be some net electric field, like so-called induced electric field uh, inside the dielectric because of this polarization effect. So this uh, uh, induced electric field can be represented easier uh, when we don't consider some uh, three-dimensional like bulk distribution of electric dipoles aligned in electric field. But instead of this, uh, we can consider accumulation of some surface uh, induced uh, charge at one edge. Let's say uh, here is negative charge accumulated and here is positive charge accumulated at the surface of the dielectric. Um, and uh, so it's some effective charges, which uh, surface charges, which uh, can model the induced electric field uh, in the dielectric, which is created by all these um, 
like many molecular dipoles aligned in um, external field. So in this case, we see that uh, we still have external electric field, but besides that, after this uh, rearrangement, polarization of internal molecular dipoles, we also created some internal induced electric field in the dielectric. And this electric field is oriented in the opposite direction. So we kind of need to subtract uh, external from external electric field, this induced electric field, and then we will uh, end up with the um, like net resultant electric field, which uh, is inside this um, capacitor. And obviously, if induced electric field is in opposite direction, then the initial external electric field, obviously that uh, net uh, electric field uh, after placing uh, this dielectric between two plates will be smaller than the uh, electric field without the electric, which is E naught. So let us stop sharing, come back here. And so what we have seen on this um, figure, uh, we can write like this. So electric field, like net electric field, will be equal to E naught, initial external electric field without the electric, minus E induced. So this is the key uh, moment here, so which comes from the polarization of um, molecular di electric dipoles uh, in external uh, field when we place this dielectric between two uh, plates of the parallel plate capacitor. So now let us go uh, like dive a bit deeper in this analysis and uh, how we can represent these electric fields. So we, uh, from the figure, remember we operate with uh, sigma, with the electric uh, surface um, uh, charge density. So net electric field can be represented as uh, sigma times uh, sigma divided by epsilon zero, then induced electric field is represented as sigma induced divided by epsilon zero. And uh, we know that, uh, sorry, here is uh, epsilon zero. So uh, when we don't have the electric, uh, so it will be uh, epsilon zero uh, equal to sigma divided by epsilon uh, E zero, external electric field or electric field uh, in between two uh, plates of the capacitor will be equal sigma divided by epsilon uh, zero. Then we have certain induced electric field in the opposite direction and that will be uh, sigma induced divided by epsilon zero. And the resultant electric uh, field will be, we already know this, uh, it will be electric field uh, initial in vacuum divided by K. So we can write that it will be equal to sigma divided by K epsilon zero. So here is important uh, thing to understand. This sigma here for uh, E naught and sigma here for E for resultant field, they are equal. It's the same sigma because when we place uh, the electric inside the capacitor, we don't add or reduce uh, charges accumulated uh, at, surf like sur at the surface of the plates of this capacitor. So it remains the same. That's why uh, sigma before and sigma after placing the, um, the electric in this capacitor will be the same. 
this induced uh, sigma is different story because that's what we um, in, induce on the surface of the electric because of polarization. Uh, and uh, uh, but still the whole system remains electrically neutral uh, because we don't add and uh, don't subtract any uh, electric charges from the dielectric. It just because of polarization effect, rearrangement of charges, molecular dipoles inside the dielectric. Okay, now we can take into account these expressions of electric field in terms of sigma and uh, use this uh, equation for the net electric field. So it will be, uh, let's do it already on the next slide. It will be sigma divided by a epsilon zero, so which stands for E for uh, electric field, uh, net electric field after placing the, the electric. It will be equal to sigma divided by epsilon zero, which is E naught, initial electric field in vacuum, minus this induced electric field. Sigma induced divided by epsilon zero. So now we can rearrange this uh, and extract, like express induced uh, electric uh, surface uh, density of electric charge. So let us do it. It will be sigma induced divided by epsilon zero is equal to sigma divided by epsilon minus uh, sigma divided by k epsilon. So we can factor out sigma epsilon zero. Here will be one minus one k, one over k. So here we can cancel out epsilon zero and uh, eventually we will get sigma times k minus one over k. So this is the uh, relationship uh, which gives us the uh, like equation which describes the relationship between uh, induced a surface density of electric charge on the surface of the electric and uh, uh, surface uh, charge density at uh, plates of the capacitor. Now let us consider this in uh, um, assuming that K, the, the, the electric constant, is always larger than unity. So from here, we can show that uh, sigma induced is always smaller than sigma. So in the, uh, on the dielectric surface, this uh, effective uh, surface uh, charges, which describe internal induced electric field, uh, that density is always smaller than the uh, surface density of accumulated uh, charges on the plates of the capacitor. So, uh, and what will happen if, for instance, we put not a uh, dielectric, but some conductor in between two plates? So first of all, assume that we don't touch the, um, there, there, there are some gaps uh, between this conductor and plates because otherwise we will just short the uh, conductor and will be uh, short the plates of the capacitor and it will not be any more capacitor. But let's assume that there are some gaps in between the uh, piece of metal conductor, which is placed in a uh, uh, capacitor between two uh, charged plates. So in this case, so we know from previous lectures that uh, under electrostatic equilibrium, elect internal electric field in uh, uh, 
conductor is equal to zero. So E is equal to zero. And uh, uh, in that case, if electric field is equal to zero, uh, like net electric field in this system is equal to zero, then from uh, this uh, equation, when we say that E is equal to E naught minus E induced, uh, we can uh, write that E induced is equal to E naught. And that means that uh, if we place a conductor in between these two plates, then the induced surface density of electric charge on the conductor will be equal to uh, sigma, which is the surface density of electric charge accumulated on the plates of the capacitor. So this, the fact that they are equal to each other is possible only in the case of placing of a, um, a conductor, not dielectric. In the case of dielectric, this uh, induced uh, sigma will be always smaller than the um, accumulated surface density of charges on the plates of the capacitor. Uh, so in case of uh, conductor, uh, it is called that electric charge accumulated on the plate of the capacitor will be totally screened, like uh, um, compensated by the electric charge accumulated in the, uh, on the surface of the conductor. Uh, so this is like some particular uh, example. Uh, however, uh, of course, we always like usually uh, operate with some dielectrics in uh, capacity inside the space between two plates of the capacitor. However, there are some cases when these facts should be also taken into account uh, when we place uh, conductors. And uh, I think we can make one example before we finish today's lecture. Uh, what will happen in terms of uh, change of the capacitance if uh, we have some electrically charged parallel plate capacitor initially and we place some uh, metal block with certain thickness in this uh, capacitor. So in this case, there will be some surface density of positive and negative charges accumulated on the uh, surface of this uh, metal block. So the total distance will be D between plates and the thickness of this uh, metal block is A. So in this case, we can uh, represent such a system as two capacitors connected in series. So it will look like this. Mm -hmm. So instead of this block, we can draw two additional plates which are connected with a wire. So distance between these internal plates will be A, and distance between these plates uh, will be D minus A divided by two, and here D minus A divided by two. So it will be negative, positive, negative, positive. So actually, we have two capacitors connected in series. It will be capacitor uh, C1 uh, and capacitor C2. Now let us calculate what will be some equivalent capacitance of such system C. So in order to do that, so we know how we calculate capacitance of two capacitors connected in series. Uh, it's one over 
C, the effective capacitance, is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2. So this will be equal to one over uh, what is capacitance of C1? It's epsilon zero times A divided by D minus A divided by two. So it's just standard equation for the parallel plate capacitance plus the same capacitance for C2 because it's kind of symmetric case will be epsilon zero times A divided by D minus A uh, divided by two. So we can rearrange this. It will be D minus A divided by two epsilon zero A plus D minus A divided by two epsilon zero A. And uh, as a result, so since these are actually the same uh, two additives, uh, we uh, end up with D minus A divided by epsilon zero A. So from here, since it's one over C, uh, the capacitance of the equivalent capacitance of such system where we uh, added, uh, like embedded inside some uh, conducting uh, block uh, will be equal to epsilon zero A divided by D minus A. And uh, keep in mind that if A, if the thickness of this block approaches to zero, then uh, capacitance approaches to epsilon a epsilon zero times a divided by d so we can neglect with this small um, uh, number here in the numerator and that is just equation for the standard equation for the parallel plate capacitor means if we put a very thin foil uh, metal foil in between uh, plates of uh, parallel plate capacitor the capacitance of the uh, like effective capacitance of such system with and without this very thin foil, uh, metal foil will be the same. So it will not uh, affect the capacitance. But if this foil is not a foil, but it's some block with certain thickness, then this is the procedure how you need to address this type of problem. Uh, so next time, I will finish uh, this, we will provide you one more example. Uh, when we uh, partially fill the volume between two plates with a dielectric in this case. So now we consider metal uh, like conductor, but um, next time we will consider partially filled um, capacitor with uh, dielectric. Uh, we'll also explain you how to address this type of um, problems and uh, we will start next topic uh, which is uh, electric uh, current and like electric resistance so thank you very much for attention uh, if you have any questions you're welcome um, so we'll be glad to see you on friday uh, we have a lecture, so it will be a lecture plus lecture before the first uh, midterm. And uh, don't forget about this. Prepare for solving problems in one kappa. Just standard procedure as you did before. Nothing new is planned. Okay, thank you very much for attention. Thank and you, Professor. Yeah, have a good evening. See you on Friday. Bye bye.